Hi guys, in this video we're going to do a HLOOKUP nested within a VLOOKUP. And you may think, why? Well, the reason is because one of my friends who is a hardcore Excel guru actually came across this at work. And so I went ahead and made a little mock example using two tables here and a third one for which we're going to be pulling data into here. Okay, so obviously everything here is bite size and small so that we can manage it on one screen and see what's going on. Okay, so an H lookup within a V lookup. If either of those functions sound new to you, you should go to my channel and check out video tutorials specifically about those done, treated alone before you come here and see how they come together in one function. Okay, I got plenty of great videos on VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP. Okay, so these cells over here represent where I want to type this fancy nested fun function or formula. And these are the two tables, like I said, for which I will be pulling in information from. Now, what I want to do in this yellow cell here, in these guys, but starting with this one, is I want Excel to look for A first on this table in this table okay so naturally it's gonna find it really quick that's what a vertical lookup is because this is up and down so this is called a vertical so we would use a vertical lookup and then go over to the right and give me the appropriate column value either 4, 22 or 64 okay now that, up to this point, sounds exactly like a VLOOKUP, except we're going to make this arrow, the one going this way, the choice of which value to return dynamic. Or at least that information comes from another source, and that is this table. Okay, This table tells us which of these three values Excel should return here. So, the H lookup goes horizontally this way. It'll find A, and it'll find it pretty quick again because it's the first one. And then I will tell it to give me the second row in this table, which represents column numbers. And then it'll feed this back into the third argument of the V lookup for, which means which will be to, which will tell Excel and the VLOOKUP function to go over to the one, I mean the two, three, fourth column and give me back 64, okay? So if that was a mouthful, it should be. I'm gonna go through it at least one more time, if not twice, and you'll see what I mean, okay? So if I just did a VLOOKUP function, looking up A in this table, this is the point where the HLOOKUP comes in. Up to now, if you're familiar with the VLOOKUP, you would hard code a number in here. For example, 4. And this tells Excel to go over to the, when it finds A, to go over to the 1, 2, 3, 4 column and give you back this value. If you put 3, it would get you back this value. If you put 2, it would get you back this value. So, But we want 4 in this case. And we type false, because false, as you know, means give me an exact match. Whenever you're looking up text, you should type false 99% of the time. Okay? And that gets me 64. But if I were to drag this formula down, when it finds G, it would go to G and give me back the fourth column 45 and notice that this doesn't do this so we want to make that third argument that is this guy let me this guy right here we want to make that number not be typed in like this right we want that to go into this table and get the number appropriate for that letter and look up that column whether it's 2 for B 4 for C 
4 for A, 3 for E. Okay? So while we do that is we do H lookup here. And we this this is our value, same value, it's G4. And we're looking it up this time in this table. F4 locks it and we're getting the second row when it finds G4 which is A okay when it finds G4 which is A it'll go this 2 indicates to go to the second row this is row 1 this is row 2 just like this was column 1 2 3 4 in an H lookup you go by rows okay so back into our function and we are here comma false close that parentheses we're back into the VLOOKUP that's the third argument of the VLOOKUP comma false I had already typed so this will find me 64 okay and that's what I've typed into these yellow cells over here so let me drag this down and you'll see what happens okay let's do the second row let me walk you through what happens VLOOKUP looks up G5, which is G, okay, in this case, in table A2 to A9, over here, okay, it finds G here. Then the third argument in the VLOOKUP function is not hard-coded, but is typed as an HLOOKUP function. And this function looks up G again, but it looks it up in this table, which is what this right here is pointing at. And when it finds G, I tell it to give me the second row value, which happens to be 2 here. Then, and comma false, means do an exact match, find G, not close to G. Then I close the parentheses, that ends the H lookup. So this number 2 gets fed into the third argument of the V lookup function. Okay? And then. Excel goes into back into this table the VLOOKUP knows to find the second column which is that guy and that's why we get 25 I've done it I've repeated this over here this is the same as this okay so one more time for the last one and this should make sense for those of you who are a little bit more advanced in this in Excel so VLOOKUP starts out pretty normal look up this guy in this table he finds D but it doesn't know which of these values to get yet which one of these that's fed to it by the third argument which normally is just typed in but here is an H lookup goes over here finds G6 again which is D and we get the second row so we get four that gets fed back into the VLOOKUP function which tells Excel to go to use the VLOOKUP function to get the fourth value so now we that's how we get the 12 and the false is here the false is here both for the HLOOKUP and the VLOOKUP are used because we're doing a text uh, based lookup so we want exact matches okay so I hope this was helpful like I said one of my friends actually uses used something like this at work so I thought I'd make a video uh, for, for anyone out there who's interested or who uh, had a problem like this themselves hope this was helpful subscribe to my channel favorite like comment and until next time have a great day